Hey, I want to take a moment, a little bit of time anyways, and show what I'm going to be using to do some incredible time lapses and some real wicked photography of the Milky Way that I would consider on a pretty professional level. You're going to have to invest some money into the, to do it, but not as much as you think. And you can pretty much use all the items separately for other stuff. To start it out with, I got a Celstron 130 SLT, very basic uh, reflector telescope with the auto troller on it, go to, follows the stars. Pick that up for probably $399. You could use it for astronomy or whatever with a family. And once I got it aligned, I'm gonna take the telescope off the go to mount and we're not going to be using it. What I'm going to place on there is a 2x4, roughly 6 inches long. I tore apart an old tripod. You can see there, I think this is a Targus from Walmart. Drilled a hole in the bottom and I mounted that head onto, the, onto that board. And then I cut, beveled some angles in there with a sander to fit up into that mount that I go to. And I took an L-shaped piece of metal, like an angle from the hardware store, and screwed that in for support. Now I'm going to mount that. Into the telescope, which is very secure. It'll hold a decent sized camera, lenses, whatever you need. Next up. You can use a, a, any camera, I guess, SLR or a DSLR full frame APC sensor. This here's a Nikon D600 full frame with a Nikkor 1.4 50mm lens, very fast lens. We're going to mount that onto the tripod and you could just do time lapses from that. What I'm going to be using is what is called the trigger trap. The maximum exposure on that camera is 30 seconds and it's very hard to get around it and what I want to do is get up to like a 10 minute exposure and I'm not going to go in detail on the trigger trap but basically what that does plugs in to your GPS port on your cameras whatever you got you order it for that style and make sure and get the included uh, flash adapter cell phone holder mount that onto the camera on your hot shoe should I say cold shoe now you take take a cell phone Android or Apple iPod or whatever download your trigger trap app off the Play Store or app the app market and right now I have it got set up I'm gonna start out with a three minute exposure with a gap between each of three seconds and I'm only gonna take two of them and I'm gonna increase it there and I'm gonna show you just how good of a picture you can take with this thing. Now one thing with cameras or phones, a lot of them the screen will automatically shut off. I got a, well we'll let it dim. This here is called Screen On, which is an app that I also downloaded and it will keep this thing on. I want you got your phone installed, plug it into your audio port and you should be ready to go. Now I gotta turn my camera on bulb, which I do have it on bulb and I want to set my f-stop. I got to figure out a, the higher the f-stop, the sharper it's going to be. So what I'm going to do is probably leave it at four, and I'm going to run my ISO down since I'm taking such a long exposure for three minutes. And now what I want to do is get the light shut off and take the trigger trigger trap, hit the button, I'll be ready to go. All right, I got the lights off. I'm going to set this trigger trap for one duration. I'm under star trail and I'm gonna go 10 minutes. There's one minute, turn my screen off. I'm gonna do a 10 minute exposure with them settings I had on there. Low ISO, high F stop. All right, one thing I didn't take in mind with the basic telescope, you gotta have a good equatorial mount or you're gonna get star trails anyways at 10 minutes. So I'm going to drop it down 45 seconds and move on up to two minutes. Now one thing I forgot to add is you can do it in JPEG or RAW file. I do mine in RAW and what I'm going to do is convert over to JPEG 
this is the original picture you're looking at here coming out of the camera. Now I'm going to click over and show you the program that I use to convert these and edit them. Now this program for editing and converting from RAW to JPEG, I use this quite a bit for time lapse. The one which I'll get to in a second, you can do batch process and change out a lot of pictures at one time. But this is that raw file, and this is program is Capture NX-D. Go to Nikon's website; it's a free download, and I really like it. It's one; it's free and it's basic. You got a, just a wealth of settings you can play with to change out a picture to whatever you desire. This one here, I have converted over to JPEG and ended up with this picture. So it's a simple thing of whatever picture you got up, you just go up to your file and hit convert files. And you can rename it, put it wherever you want. Now, being as I got this program up, I want to quick just explain about the time lapses and raw files before we click back over to the outside. You got, just say you had a thousand pictures in the bottom here, you're going to alter, say the first one, to whatever way you want. Once you have that that picture set like that, you're going to go to file and basically run a batch process. And every continuing picture after that, whether it's 10 or 2,000 of them, you will save this into a folder on your computer and it will save it exactly like you have it and it'll convert it over to JPEG. So once that's done, you have it probably takes hours to do but it does it all on its own and you don't have to mess with it you're gonna to go to your your computer where you stored all your pictures say here and highlight all of them and what I use is movie studio platinum 13 which isn't too expensive a program I use that to render everything I have but you're gonna take all them pictures highlight them and drag them all in under the video section at one time but for those of you that do have movie studio i'm just going to quick throw this in you, you want to go to options preferences and then editing and it'll say new in still image length like this is set at five seconds what you want to do is change that down to like 0.07 so it's seven one hundredths of a second. That frame will be displayed on a computer. And if you have 1500 pictures on there, it turns it into like a three minute time lapse. Quite simple. And if somebody needs to know more or whatever, I can write and tell them, but that's basically all you end up doing. Then you end up making your movie, saving it to your hard drive. And once it's saved to your hard drive, then you take that video back and put it in to Movie Studio again, like uh, closing it out and opening it, and you can adjust you know, anything on it. You might have to pause and back up and look at the video again to kind of understand. If there's any questions, go ahead and ask. I'll gladly answer. Now using that NXD, I went from this to this, which is a little dark. And they ended up settling on this and I must say pretty good picture if I say so myself with the money that I invested and next I'm putting this Sigma 24 to 70 on this is a f 2.8 I'll probably run it at about 5.0 or so and I'm gonna get a little bit wider view and so let's see what happens this is what I ended up with with the 24 millimeter lens I was pretty much running it the same as with the 50 millimeter. I run my ISO up to 3200 and I ended up settling on about a 60 second exposure. Literally twice is what you can get out of the camera and that's what you can expect. Enough for the picture taken. The time lapses, I'm probably not going to use the trigger trap. I'm going to do a time lapse with running it off the uh, telescope go to mount and then I'll do a time lapse with just straight on off a tripod. 
All right, what you're looking at right here is the 50 millimeter lens sitting on the telescope with that adapter that I made. And it, it's following the stars, the Milky Way through the sky. And you're able to get a longer exposure, which I do believe I run this one at 15 second exposures. Then I got some clouds coming in, but pretty nice. Now we'll end up comparing that to the camera setting on its own on a single tripod where you have to drop the exposure down to 7 to 8 seconds and you'll see the difference. And right here is the camera setting on a tripod with a 7 second exposure. A lot higher ISO, you can clearly see there's more noise. It actually looks pretty good like this, but not as good as the camera sitting on the telescope. And this is a 24 millimeter lens sitting on the scope following the stars. There you go. Pretty neat setup. Person's uh, wanting to get some very nice pictures of the Milky Way. This is probably about the cheapest way you could go for the quality of pictures that you could get out of it. Plus you can use, like I said, you got a telescope, camera, and whatnot for other stuff. So, hope you enjoyed it.